So our second talk of the last session of the morning is uh, a statistical decision theoretic framework for social cho choice. And the talk will be given by Laron Xia. Thanks, and thanks everyone for, for staying. Uh, I think the snow is helping me a little bit here. Um, but um, this is joint work with Hossein Azari Sufiani, who just joined Google, and David Parks, who is still at Harvard. So um, just using one sentence to summarize our, our contribution, we build a new bridge between social choice problems and the statistics and the machine learning. And that also corresponds to a new paradigm towards the design and analysis of social choice mechanisms. Oh, by the way, this is a solid um, bri uh, stone bridge, not a chocolate bridge. So, you know, social choice is really a very general problem in our real life. Uh, probably the most typical example of social choice is presidential elections. So in presidential elections, you have a set of alternatives. Say, uh, these are the presidential candidates. You have Obama, Nader, and McCain. And you want to make a joint decision, which is the president. So the joint decision space is, in this case, exactly the same as the alternative space. So in you also have a bunch of voters. We also call them agents. Each voter uses a linear order over the set of alternatives to represent his or her preferences. And you can envision a linear order as a directed, acyclic, and complete graph over the alternatives. Okay? So then, after we collect all of the data, sometimes also known as a preference profile, we're going to apply a social choice mechanism to aggregate these preferences and make a joint decision. And probably the most popular voting rule or social choice mechanism used in the United States is called the plurality rule, which basically says that we want to choose the alternative that is ranked in the top position most often. And in this example, Obama is ranked in the top position twice versus NATO once, so the winner should be the Obama. Okay? In real life, uh, we have many other applications of social choice. Uh, well, the decision space may not be uh, the same as alternative space, and the, the agents and the alternatives may not have to be human beings. For example, in college ranking applications, the alternatives are the colleges, and the agents are the features of the colleges. And the decision, the joint decision, is a full ranking of the colleges. Or sometimes you want to aggregate maybe some uh, ratings to produce an aggregated rating and figure out what is the best restaurant in Montreal. Or you want to aggregate uh, noisy answers from mechanic turkers in crowdsourcing and hopefully produce a better answer, more accurate answer to the question you are interested in. Okay? So um, most of the previous work focused on one of the following two paradigms towards design analysis. The first one is uh, so basically we want to achieve democracy. So what does it mean? Um, that basically says that you can only assume that the agent's preferences are subjective. And the, the, the principle of social choice is to reach a joint decision, to reach a compromise, and make as many people happy as possible. So this is the approach mainly pursued by the classic social choice um, community. And the golden standard has been set through the what's so-called uh, axiomatic approach proposed by the Nobel Prize winner, Kenneth Arrow. And what does it mean? So basically, economists have proposed some normative, um, desirable properties that uh, the social choice mechanisms should satisfy, and then use them to evaluate various kinds of mechanisms. For example, anonymity says that all of the agents should be treated equally, and, and uh, neutrality says that all of the alternatives should be treated equally. We have some more interesting, uh, uh, interesting axiomatic properties like strategy proofness and monotonicity, which I'll define later on. So uh, this is uh, the traditional uh, classic social choice uh, approach. Um, and the second paradigm is probably more familiar to the NIPS community, which is we do assume there is a ground truth, objectively correct ground truth, and the agent's preferences adjust noisy perceptions of this ground truth through some statistical models. And then you just follow the standard statistic approaches uh, by using maybe an estimator like MLE or MAP to make a decision. Okay? So our goal is somewhat different and somewhat more ambitious. Um, well, we do want to obtain new and competitionally tractable mechanisms that achieve the both goals at the same time, meaning that uh, it has, will have a great and desirable axiomatic properties from the classic social choice and also great statistical properties. The first question you may ask is why we are not happy with all of the previous approaches. As you know, that social choice can be dated back to 400 BC in Plato's time. So um, the, the answer is that when you have only two alternatives, there's no, 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 no doubt that majority rule is the greatest one. So it has set its great axiomatic properties, can be computed very easily, has great um, statistical properties. 
But as long as you have a um, number of alternatives larger than two, the problem is much trickier. And usually people believe that the Kaminis rule, which is the MLE of the Malus model I would define momentarily, is a great one. But the main problem there is it's hard to compute. And there's been many work in literature trying to compute um, um, the uh, Kaminis rule in practice. Still, it's a very hard question. So uh, there are also some uh, work in my own community, computation and social choice, or more generally, economics and computation, where people focus on case-by-case -case studies, uh, mostly on evaluating existing rules. For example, there's been some work on evaluating existing social choice mechanisms with respect to statistical properties, and there's been some proposals to study like strategy-proof uh, classifiers. Okay? So our contributions are first, um, kind of conceptually, uh, we provide a new paradigm um, towards this objective, which is uh, we try to say, well, first we're gonna design the mechanism by statistics through uh, the principled framework of statistical decision theory, uh, if you know it's, uh, it was uh, formulated by Ward, and then we're gonna evaluate the newly designed mechanism with respect to social choice and computational aspects. So this is a high level um, conceptual contribution, and technically we have also have something interesting and non-trivial, so we showed two examples of mechanisms designed through our framework and compare them with the classical Kaminis rule with respect to social choice, axiomatic properties, computational properties, as well as asymptotic properties. So, and one of the key um, findings is that one of the mechanism actually works pretty well in pretty much all aspects. So uh, maybe that's a mecha new mechanism you probably want to use in your applications. So uh, in my, another maybe a more uh, important question is, why should we care about not only my research, but why should we care about reaching these two goals at the same time, because they seem to be pretty different? Well, I guess our answer is that uh, we think this is a really nice uh, opportunity of interdisciplinary research, um, while both communities, social choice community and the statistics and machine learning, can benefit from the cross-fertilization of ideas and techniques. So from the social choice point of view, it's pretty clear that um, statistical model is compelling, especially when you, in, in presidential elections. It's great that we, should comp uh, we, we reach a, a compromise, but it's also great to say that, okay, so we somehow select the, the good or ab objectively good president candidate, and this would also justify the power of democracy and the wisdom of crowd. The other direction from social choice to statistics and machine learning is less obvious, but also we think it will have a valid point, which is some social choice axiomatic properties are desirable in especially the new applications like crowdsourcing. For example, uh, strategy proof, uh, strat proof needs basically says that uh, no agents has incentive to lie about their preferences to make themselves better off. So this is desirable because uh, you don't want the, the, the mechanical turkers to tell you somehow force preferences uh, in order to get a better pay, payment or whatsoever. But this is a very strong requirement, as um, many previous research shown, and uh, maybe we want to, um, to, to have a, a slightly weaker axiomatic property, which is monotonicity, which basically says that if I raise the rank of Obama in my ranking without changing anything else, then this should not hurt Obama in the output of ranking. So, um, and you can think about if, uh, if a mechanism satisfies monotonicity, then agents may have less incentive to lie, okay? So hopefully I've convinced you that this is an interesting problem. And uh, um, so let me get be a, a bit, little bit uh, technical here. So I'm gonna introduce two uh, popular ranking models, and then I, I, I go, um, go to uh, introduce our framework. So the first one is probably more familiar to um, this community is the mouse model. So here we fix um, a dispersion parameter phi, and uh, the parameter space are composed of four rankings over the alternative. So you still remember that four rankings are directed, acyclic, and complete graphs over the alternatives, uh, like over here you have um, um, a graph over, um, over the three uh, presidential candidates. And uh, the sample space are composed of IID samples, uh, while every agent also gives you a full ranking over the alternatives. Okay, so now, um, uh, and, um, in the, and the conditional probability, uh, not, not really conditional probability, but uh, probability distribution is that given the ground truth ranking W, the probability you're gonna generate and the ranking V is uh, proportional to the phi rise to uh, the kennel tau distance between the V and the W, while the kennel tau distance is the number of pairwise, uh, pairwise flips between these two rankings. Okay, so, the Kendall, the, so that's Mallow's model, and the Condorcet's model is somewhat different, but there, except that um, you have a larger um, uh, parameter space as well as a sample space. Well, the parameter space composed of all uh, binary relations. 
So binary relations can be, invis uh, can be uh, visualized as uh, um, uh, directed, complete, but possibly cyclic graphs over the alternatives. And also every voter's ranking, it's not really a strict ranking, but also the, every voter gives you a binary relation. And the probability distribution are pretty much defined in the, the same way. So that works well so far. But if you want to select a single winner based on this model, it's not such a tricky, uh, it's, it's not an easy question because if you just uh, compute the MLE, it will give you a ranking because that's um, the parameter space. And what if we want to select a single winner as a president? There's some proposals. So uh, Fishburne basically proposed that uh, let's just look at MLE of this model, which is a ranking, and we take the top ranked alternative as a winner. Okay? And this approach has been criticized by Young by saying that we should take a Bayesian point of view and that we should have a posterior distribution over the parameter space and then we should choose the alternative that is ranked in the top position most, um, how, how to say, with highest conditional uh, marginal probability. Okay? Um, this looks pretty nice, but the problem is that it probably just works for this specific model. For some more um, interesting um, parametric ranking models, uh, we don't really know what is a good notion of marginal probability, especially for, for example, pack lewis model and more generally random utility models, where the parameter space is uh, continuous, and uh, which corresponds to the parameterizations of uh, utility distribution. So the problem is not that clear. So um, the, this challenge basically says that, well, there's something missing in our modeling of the problem which leads to our paper, and here is our um, main contribution. Um, this is a, a very, um, uh, how to say, um, uh, statistical decision theoretical framework. Um, well, the inputs are composed of three parts. Uh, you have the statistical model as user, and we also have a an, decision space, D, which may be different from the parameter space, theta. And also, we explicitly model the loss function, which has two inputs, the first one, theta, is the unknown ground truth from the uh, parameter space, and the second one is a decision you're gonna make. So given all of this, the mechanism is, in this paper we focus on the Bayesian uh, principle, well, uh, the mechanism will is a decision function that should minimize the Bayesian expected loss. So just to be a little bit repetitive, uh, given the preference profile P, um, which is a data, we want to, and then you, you're gonna have a posterior distribution over a parameter space, and you want to make a joint decision D um, so that um, the expected loss with respect to the loss function and the posterior dist distribution theta is minimized. So, um, and we also obtained so our two, two examples, like the first one, FB1, um, apologize for the poor notation, B means Bayesian, and one means that it's the first model we study in the paper, um, which is a, is a, is a, a um, mechanism correspond to the Mouse model, and the decision space is a single winner, uh, and the loss function is the top loss function, which just mimics the idea of Young's uh, marginal probability uh, idea, and uh, that's just for illustration, and we focus on Bayesian estimator for, uh, with respect to the uniform prior. And we also have FB2, uh, which is just you, you replace the Mouse model by the Condorcet model. Okay, looks pretty uh, similar, but if you compare them with the, the chemist rule due to the fish burns uh, definition, then you will see that um, um, the, the chemist rule um, satisfies some um, desirable axiomatic properties. So the first three columns are desirable axiomatic properties, um, but the problem with chemist rule is that it's hard to compute and it doesn't minimize Bayesian risk with respect to the Mellos model nor the uh, Condorcet model. So FB1, the mechanism with respect to Mellos model, does reasonably well, um, but it's hard to compute and it's, uh, it minimizes the, the Mellos, um, uh, Bayesian risk with respect to Mellos model by definition. And we want to highlight FB2, which is mechanism with respect to the Condorcet model, and it does um, reasonably well in terms of axiomatic properties, and also it minimizes Bayesian risk with respect to the Condorcet model. And the best thing about it is, is that it can be computed in polynomial time. So that basically says that uh, we have, uh, if you want to use a, a new mechanism, maybe FP2 is a good uh, choice, but of course you have your own choice of, of the model. So uh, we also have done some asymptotic comparisons of these three mechanisms. So basically we want to see when you have large data set, um, do we really care which one should we use? And the, the next theory, um, theorem we proved is that for the Mellos model, we don't really care that much because all of them should be the same um, asymptotic as, uh, almost surely as the number of agents goes to infinity. Um, but for the Condorcet model, well, we have some surprising result basic said that for some ground truths, um, some of these mechanisms are different with non-negligible probability and we have uh, used some simulations to try to figure out what the probability is really non-negligible. 
So I'm, I'm happy to explain more details uh, at the poster, um, but let me quickly summarize our approach. So we have built a new bridge between um, social choice and machine learning and statistics, and hopefully that's also correspond to a new uh, paradigm, and uh, please you guys apply your fancy techniques and help us to solve the social choice problem. That's the, probably the most important take home message. And this is a very important, uh, how to say, and flexible framework we believe, and we have been working on different configuration of the problems, and in addition, uh, we have some other par new paradigms like design by machine learning, evaluation by social choice, and uh, statistics, which is very challenging challenging because it's hard to translate the satisfiability of axiomatic properties into uh, maybe some regularization terms in the loss function and have some um, very um, preliminary idea discussed in the position paper recently. And also I'm going to give you another uh, design by social choice and evaluation by statistic and computation um, 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 approach at the analysis of ranked data workshop on Saturday. So that's it, thank you, and I'll see you at poster number 53. Time for a few questions, but before I'd like to ask uh, all the spotlight presenters to line up here while we go for the questions. So, so am I right that there's a little bit of a tension between the statistical framework that you've set up? Uh, and traditional social, social choice theory a la Arrow uh, in the uh, traditional social choice theory is trying to aggregate preferences where my loss function may be different from your loss function. And so the notion of a universal ranking that we're trying to identify uh, doesn't really apply. Yes, that's true, yeah, yeah. So I guess the question that is more like a comment, uh, traditional social choice only assume that everyone should have different uh, subjective preferences, and uh, it's probably not a good idea to talk about uh, there's a universal uh, correct ranking in some sense, but. So, so is there a way to generalize this at all? It's true that when I vote, um, I'm not revealing my true preferences because I'm somewhat ignorant about the, um, what the candidates will actually do once they're in office, and I've collected incomplete information and so forth. Um, is there any way to synthesize these two views? Um, I don't know. There, there, I think there are many papers somehow related to, I think you are talking about how about let's change the model a little bit and study maybe a game theoretical situation. So um, there are a couple, I can think about a couple of approaches related to it, but I mean, we can discuss offline. Thank you. Any other question? Well, in that case, let's uh, thank the speaker again.